What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. Today we are finally taking a look at the gaming benchmarks for our AMD Ryzen APUs. We've got the Ryzen 3 2200G 4-core 4-thread part and the Ryzen 5 2400G 4-core 8-thread part, both of which uh, we unboxed last week. You guys probably caught that. And here we are going to test the gaming performance, so very exciting stuff. Now obviously I could test the Ryzen 5 and 3 chips independently, but I'm sure there are a lot of reviewers on YouTube and elsewhere that are already already going to do that. So if you guys want, I'll put some links in the description below where you can check those guys out uh, and, uh, and show them some love, tell them I sent you. But today what I'm going to do is actually test the Ryzen 5 2400G against the Ryzen 3 paired with a GT 1030. The reason for that being these two components are pretty much about the same price as a single Ryzen 5 2400G. Maybe $10, $15 more expensive depending on where you look, but both of these could be a viable option if you're looking for a low power gaming solution, especially with GPU prices where they are right now. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. Can the, can the integrated graphics on the Ryzen 5 2400G beat out or at least match a GT 1030, which is of course a discrete card? It'll be interesting to find out. You can see I've actually got our test bench right here in front of me, which also goes to show just how small you can get these uh, APU systems down to. We've got, uh, of course, our Ryzen APUs at the center of it all, being cooled by the included Wraith Spire, and that is on top of an AB350N gaming Wi-Fi motherboard from Gigabyte. A uh, fantastic little mini ITX board. We've got 16 gigs of G-Scale Ripjaws 5 DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. I was able to get that rated speed on both of our hardware configurations here, so that was fantastic. Had to do that with, uh, was able to do that with very minimal effort. And we've also got our boot drive and all of our games loaded onto an ADATA SX900 SSD. That's a 512 gigabyte model, and that is all being powered by an SFX unit from Corsair. Their 450 watt uh, power supply right there. So. Altogether, a very lovely little test bed. We're using all the latest drivers and, uh, and, and the BIOS updates from AMD themselves. These are all the pre-release drivers and updates that they gave us reviewers just before launch. That being said, you should also bear in mind that the drivers for the GT 1030 particularly uh, are much more optimized at this point. I mean, this card's been out for a while now, so uh, this definitely has more of a software advantage compared to these new APUs. But rest assured, and I've reached out to AMD about this, is that as time goes on, as always, they're going to be releasing new BIOS updates and, uh, and drivers and things like that to continue optimizing and improving upon the performance and stability of these chips. So that's great news. So bear that in mind as we go into our testing here. I'm also using the latest updates uh, for Windows, which is 1709 at the time of filming. And of course, the latest uh, Wickle drivers were used for the GT 1030 here. I'd also like to point out that most of the games that we're testing today were run at 1920 by 1080. There were a couple that uh, just maxed out the VRAM for our APU here. So we had to bump that down to 1280 by 720. Those will be indicated or that will be indicated on the benchmark slide. So you know which ones were tested at which resolutions. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's get on to the benchmarks themselves and test out these two hardware configurations to see which one reigns supreme. So there you guys have it. Some pretty interesting results. Um, for, for starters, I have to hand it to AMD. They have made one hell of an APU. I mean, this pretty much blows every integrated graphics solution that Intel has ever thrown at us out of the water hands down. Um, at the same time, I was experiencing, as you guys could probably tell from the graphs, some frame time issues with our APU here, particularly the Ryzen 5 2400G when it was uh, using the integrated Vega graphics. Um, there were some frame time spikes in a few of the games that, uh, that, that are a little bit concerning. Um, especially games like, you know, Counter-Strike and Rocket League, which are very easy to run, we're still experiencing a little bit of stuttering here and there, which made the overall experience in those particular titles slightly less than ideal, which makes it hard to recommend over this setup at the moment because the GT 1030 was pretty smooth sailing. I mean, there was 
hardly any stuttering, maybe in one of the games that we saw, but for the most part, the overall experience was smoother on the GT 1030 paired with the Ryzen 3 2200G. Of course, going back to what I said at the beginning of the video, these are very early and premature drivers that we're gonna have to wait a while for AMD to iterate, or maybe we won't have to wait too long. It could be in a week or so that they release a new BIOS update or a GPU driver that fixes some of these stuttering issues that I'm encountering today. Also, I should, for the record, say that go watch other people's reviews because they might not have experienced the same sort of uh, artifacts or issues or stuttering that I'm seeing here. So it's always good to sort of spread out um, who you're watching and uh, and check, you know, double check your reviews. Now that being said, once AMD irons out any issues with stuttering, assuming that there are stuttering issues that go beyond just my own testing, this becomes an incredibly good value at 169 US dollars. Uh, this thing is very capable. I mean, it pretty much holds a candle to the GT 1030, which is a discrete GPU. And it's gonna make a fantastic stopgap uh, temporary gaming rig solution for those of you who can't afford to pay an outrageous amount for a new GPU. So if you're waiting for the prices to drop down, this is definitely a decent option. Not to mention it's gonna be great for esports, games like uh, I would imagine Dota 2 and League of Legends, even though I didn't test those today, the fact that it's performing very well in average frame rates for games like Counter-Strike uh, and, and Rocket League is it shows great promise. Now speaking realistically, there's only so much an APU can do with its integrated graphics solution. So you're pretty much gonna have to compromise with console-like graphics for the most part until you get a discrete GPU in there. But at the same time, there are so many other features about PC gaming that you can still enjoy with an APU. For example, PC exclusive titles, or how about an uncapped frame rate, having access to in-game quality settings, um, and, and really the list goes on, keyboard and mouse integration, and, and so forth. So uh, overall, this thing is friggin' awesome, and the fact that it's mostly keeping pace with the GT 1030 is absolutely fantastic. But bear in mind, since you don't have a discrete GPU, uh, you're getting less power, you're drawing less power, which is generating less heat, which requires a less beefy cooling solution, and in turn is gonna equate to less noise if you don't actually need active cooling, apart from the CPU cooler itself, which most systems generally need. So overall, I'm very happy with this chip. You guys let me know what you think. The only question I, that I haven't answered yet is, does it scratch your overclocking itch? Which is of course, a question we'll have to answer in a later video. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, or first off, let me know what you think of these APUs, what you think of the results so far. And, uh, and again, like I said, go ahead and watch other reviewers and check out their results as well. Um, let me know what you think in the comments, guys. I'm always curious to hear your thoughts. Toss a like on the video if you enjoyed it. You can also check out more of my content on Floatplane if you want to watch it up to a week early without ads. I'll put a link for that in the video description. Till next time, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next video.